What's going on, guys? We got some good news today. We got a push in the west, the north, and the south, but let's start off on the one in the south first. Ukraine closed this little pocket of resistance right here, which is holding out after Ukraine had mostly liberated Suja. I mean, liberated, you know what I mean. It's nice to see this front stabilize because the battle for Suja was one of the hardest in this current invasion, and I think Suja is Ukraine's greatest combat victory so far in this whole operation. It's the biggest settlement they've taken so far, and it displays that this isn't just a maneuver war, and Ukraine is good at urban fighting too. Moving up north to the big one, I know you guys want to see this. Two days ago, Ukraine got a little foothold on the heights up here, and they've completely expanded it now. In my last video, I said that once they get full control of this hill, they're just gonna roll down to the settlements that are between the river and here, and you can see that they've already started doing that by Stara, Sorochina, and Nikolaevka. I'm used to the Ukrainian town names, not the Russian ones. When I started this channel two years ago, I did not think I'd be reading Russian town names, and they also captured Kremione right here. If I delete this overlay really quick, I don't know what they had going on up here, but, <laughs> but I'm glad it's evened out now. It's also nice that they captured Juravali yesterday because now they have a foothold across this river. Now, this one is probably the most pivotal. Uh, pivotal. <laughs> Same basketball. This is the most pivotal push so far because Koronevo is kind of like the hub around this whole region. You can see that there's not a settlement as big as it until you get 25 kilometers away. Two days ago, we got some reports that Ukraine is trying to bypass Koronevo by going up this way. Now that they have the foothold at Juravali too, it's going to be easier to cross this river and bypass Koronevo. Beyond that, it's pretty much just fields and completely flat open ground. So so whoever basically can get the reserves in there first is in control of this area. If we're able to see Ukraine bypass Korinevo, I think the Russians are going to try to hold the line about like on this little line of settlements, or they'll probably try to get it here unless the Ukrainians are able to get past. It looks like Korinevo is currently the main hotspot of fighting because this is a key settlement. And if Ukraine is able to get control over this, that would seriously help them in this campaign. Now let's get into a little bit of extra stuff. This little push right here is not the extent of how far they've gone. There have been reported attacks in Sheputovka, Kauchu, and reconnaissance groups have been seen as far north as Kromsky Beaky, which sounds terrible in my accent. When this war started, did you think that there would be Ukrainians operating 30 kilometers into the Russian border? <laughs> but overall, today is important because this was a, a well-needed momentum shift. I'll put up the chronological timeline I had last video. I think the red was the 7th, orange was the 8th, yellow was the 9th, green was the 10th, and blue was the 11th. And I don't think there were any reported gains yesterday, so getting this big of an area and in three different spots is really crucial. This would be a nice little morale boost and honestly i don't know how far they're gonna go like are they actually gonna liberate kursk are they gonna go that far i'm not sure this has just been amazing to watch and i'm not really sure what the plan is to try to draw troops away from the donbass to move it to a less static front get some more stuff with dynamics i'm not sure i'm gonna have to do a little bit more research but yeah that's all i got for you guys today sorry it's a little later i wasn't i wasn't planning on making one today but then i opened up the map and i was like damn so that's all we got i'll see you guys later